happy for another episode of Tim's Love of Garden. Okay, so uh, the parsnips have uh, sort of chitted now. I don't know if you can see. I'll just sort of try and get one out. Um, and they've all and they've all done the same kind of thing. So if you if you look at the seed itself, it's got like a, a sort of little root on the side there. Um, so what I'm going to be doing now is, uh, unfortunately, I can't film on the allotment um, today because the the wind's far too um, sort of windy to. Um, actually make any kind of film because of the sound but what I'll do is um, I'm, I'm going to plant these in the ground exactly like I did the others sort of about an inch or so below the, um, the ground making sure that the uh, the ground's nice and um, you know sort of broken up fine make a drill about an, um, sort of an inch or so deep and then plant plant these seeds in to the um, to the ground I'm not going to touch them with my hand I'm just going to sort of sort of put them in from um, you, you know basically just like that Bob them in the ground, and then uh, obviously I'm I'm growing four different varieties um, of uh, parsley, as you know. So they're all they're all um, they've all chitted exactly the same. Basically, this is the uh, um, arrow um, parsley, as you can see. The root's not quite as long on that one, uh, but as you can see, there is a root. Um, so there's the four different types. That's arrow. Um, this one here is. Um, um, javelin, which is an F1 hybrid, and the other two are uh, white gem. Now these ones haven't germinated quite as well, but there is the odd one with a uh, root on it. So what I'm going to do is um, put these in the ground, and uh, we'll just see how they uh, sort of get on. And then these are the the final type, which is Albion. This is quite an old variety, as you can see, in exactly the same way. Uh, that's got like a little root coming out, so the you know they've clearly sort of germinated. So what I'll do is I'll put these in the ground now. Uh, but as I say, I'm, I uh, I can only apologise. The weather being the way that it is, um, I'm not able to film. But uh, I'll put them in exactly like I did um, in a film a couple of weeks ago um, with the uh, the parsnips. Um, the, you know, if you look for parsnips in the title, uh, which was about sort of two or three weeks ago, um, the the parsnips in the uh, the parsley propagator have actually um, germinated. So if I just make a little bit of room, let's get these over to one side, and I'll show you the uh, the parsnips in here. <coughs> so as you can see, uh, we've got some little uh, parsnips coming in there. You can see the little leaves. Um, so what I'm going to do is not every one's uh, germinated. I can I can see even the ones that haven't got. Um, actual little parsnip plants I can see sort of little spots of green so they're obviously trying to come through so I'm going to leave them in here for now so till the roots go down through the tubes and then what I'm going to be doing is when they get to about about that high um, so they've got um, a couple of the true leaves on there I'll be planting them in the ground and then obviously we're going to do the experiment so I've got some that have chitted in in, in trays some that have been in the um, parsnip propagator some of directly um, planted into the ground and there's going to be a fourth kind of dimension where the the tops if I can find them basically what I'm going to do is um, cut the top off a, um, a pot bottle so just this top bit here and I'm going to make like a little cloche to go over the uh, the parsnip to see if that actually helps the germination or at least the growth anyway so um, I'll put those in the garden and I'll show you how they're getting on in a few weeks time Okay, so the sunflowers are doing really well, as you can see. You know, they're sort of two or three inches tall now, and they've uh, two of the sort of the true leaves 
So you've got sort of these two leaves, which are the sort of seedling leaves, and then you've got the the first two, what we call true leaves. As soon as you start to see them, really, they're ready to, um, you know, sort of start to um, sort of pop them on. So what I'm going to do um, is uh, these are more than hardy enough to go outside now. Um, now they've germinated, but what I'm going to be doing is just potting them up into a um, sort of four inch, three, three or four inch pot. And uh, the good thing with, with them sort of doing with these modules is you do get a very high, um, always always remember either leaves or, or, or roots when you're pulling these out. Um, that one doesn't want to come for some reason. But uh, there you go. Um, and all, all I'm going to be doing is potting these up into, um, just move this over so you can see. Uh, just potting these up into the sort of three or four inch pots. And I'll be putting these outside now to sort of harden off. Now these will be more than happy um, to stay in these um, pots now for the next sort of two or three weeks and then I'll be planting them out into the uh, the garden. Now what I typically do with um, with sunflowers is I'll, I grow quite a lot of sunflowers, probably um, sort of 20 or so um, around the allotment and uh, apart from apart from the fact that the uh, Obviously, they look pretty and stuff. You know, a, a lot of people have asked me um, in the in the past, why do you grow, you know, sort of so many flowers and that in the allotment? Well, you know, why don't you just grow vegetables? Well, the, in all honesty, the reason is um, is what you want to do is attract um, sort of um, insects into the into the allotment, and and obviously, uh, you know, sunflowers will attract the uh, the bees and other. Um, sort of useful and beneficial insects into the allotment and by doing that your other plants um, will get pollinated so you, you know you know things like um, things like your uh, sweet corn and stuff like that um, will, will, will get pollinated even though the, they don't attract sort of bees so much to those but uh, you know they will you know if you've got insects milling around you're going to have birds as well and uh, all these things really um, are part of the fine balance that you need to keep in your allotment. Um, so flowers are a good thing. The other thing as well is obviously with the sunflowers another really big beneficial thing is uh, um, I feed them to the chickens. Now from, from sunflowers if you've got, if you got chickens really you should be uh, growing sunflowers as well because sunflower seeds are a, are a, are a really good source of uh, vitamins to your chickens. Um, so by um, by growing sunflowers and then feeding the uh, the sunflowers to chickens afterward, um, you know you're providing your chickens with a really good um, source of vitamins, um, better than you can possibly buy in the shops. Now, all all you need to do is you you know you can either do one or two things. You can either get the flowers when they're finished, and just literally just hang them up, typically upside down in the uh, the chicken coop. And the chickens will happily peck out the seeds and eat them, which will actually give your chickens, you know, something to do as well. Um, you know, it, you know, it'll keep them um, sort of entertained, if you, you know, as it were. Or the other thing you can do is just bring them in the greenhouse um, and and sort of dry them out a little bit in the greenhouse, and then basically just take all the seeds off yourself just by. Um, just sort of rubbing your fingers over the uh, the seeds will basically release them from the flower head, and then you can sort of store them and give them to your chickens later. So what I typically do is a combination of those two things. What I do is I put some flowers directly into the chickens when they're you know when they're ready, when they've finished, and I also um, I also um, sort of take the seed off the uh, the sunflower head as well, and. Um, sort of store them and give them to the chickens a little bit later on when the uh, the weather gets a bit cooler because obviously um, the vitamins are good for them then as well so uh, most certainly in the winter you know that's when you lose most chickens because they'll get you know some kind of sort of flu bug or cold or whatever and uh, by giving them the vitamins um, from the, uh, the sunflower seeds you're giving your chickens the best chance to get through the winter so that's uh, half a dozen often potted up I'll, I'll um, continue with these what I'm going to do is basically put these outside in a cold frame now and just let them um, um, sort of develop on from there so I'll just do a quick tour of the uh, the greenhouse um, I've potted up the um, Nero um, 
kale. Um, that was the first batch that went in. Uh, the second batch is actually here, uh, which is which is just about to go in. But uh, and that's the uh, sorry no that's the Nero kale. This is the this is the curly kale. Um, so these are really now at the stage to go in. So I'll be doing them um, in the next couple of days. Um, that's the purple sprouting broccoli. I did a quick clip on that. Um, the courgettes, pumpkins, winter winter fest squashes, and the uh, the other squashes, the uh, and the pumpkin sugar, the large ones at the back there, are all doing well. We've got a couple that have not come through yet. Um, I'm not quite sure if they will come through, but uh, to be honest with you, with the pumpkins and that, I don't want too many anyway. Um, but uh, the ones that have come through, obviously, I've got plenty of courgettes, which are the which are the main ones really. Tomato plants are doing really well. Um, I've also potted up the um, Alicante tomatoes as you can see. So I've got uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 18, uh, 20, 23 of those. I've promised a couple of those to a friend who's got the next plot to me. Um, he wants to grow a couple of those. So they're the um, Alicante tomatoes. These are the, uh, the money maker tomatoes as you can see they're doing really well. I need to really start to um, spread them out a little bit to be honest with you. Um, over here are the um, the small sort of cherry tomatoes. That one's flopped over whilst I watered it. Um, so there I actually did eight in the end. I just did a tray full. Cucumbers that you saw in a previous clip. These tomatoes here are the um, sort of additional um, money maker um, tomatoes. Um, I've just put them in because what I might do is plant some of these outside as well. Um, the peas are really underwhelming. Um, for some reason I've got three that have come at the end there. Um, as you can see all the way up um, there's, there's no peas come through at all. I had a little bit of a dig there earlier on and they are actually sprouting but they've just not come through so I don't think it's been quite warm enough for them to uh, to, uh, to actually sprout through yet. The sweet corn is um, been a complete disaster to be honest with you. I don't know why but the sweet corn just hasn't germinated. Obviously we've got one here, uh, we've got a couple of trays over here. Um, so th three out of the 15 have come there, um, sort of six out of the 15 have come there. Um, none of them are particularly strong and out of this one here we've got a couple, uh, one in each of the trays. So really I've been quite sort of disappointed with the sweet corn germination um, this year. Um, I normally get around sort of 80-90% germination but I think it's just been a bit cold over the last couple of weeks and they haven't germinated so I will persevere, I'll, I'll leave them in the greenhouse and uh, see how they got on but what I have done um, is I've planted another batch now these um, these are um, seeded up now and also that one at the top there and that one at the top there, I've um, put a, another batch of seed in there, same variety so obviously if they do come they come if uh, if if these don't finally germinate, then at least I've got some more. Um, they're the uh, chickpeas that you saw in, in a previous clip, uh, or it might be the next video. But I've done a clip on um, putting them. That's I'm going to be doing two uh, two or three plants this year that I've never done before. First one is chickpeas, which are quite an ornate plant, and obviously you get the chickpeas at the end. I'm going to be doing the obviously the sweet potatoes. Um, which is just up there where it's nice and warm and I'm also doing some uh, um, some lentils as well which I've never grown before so I thought I'd give those a, um, a go so but these basically need to be soaked in water before I um, set them but again these are French seeds so I'll be putting those in as well the cucumbers, uh, sorry not the cucumbers, the parsnips um, as you can see um, parsnip propagating works nicely so they're all germinating um, and uh, coming through. Uh, there's a few that have not got any in yet, but uh, I'm sure this time, obviously, this one has got actually four coming through, uh, which is the look of the draw. But uh, the parsley propagator is working well. Um, I've already shown you the kale that's just about to be potted up. Um, and that's pretty much the greenhouse. Um, nothing showing from the, uh, the ginger yet, but there's time for that yet. So uh, that's the greenhouse. Now it might get a little bit windy in a moment, but uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, do my best to shade the uh, the microphone. Leaks are okay, not too bad. I've seen better leaks, to be honest with you. But I think over the last week or so we've had quite cool weather, 
and um, that's kind of knocked things back a little bit. Beans are doing alright, obviously I had to turn a few of them around, I've got a couple that haven't come through, um, I'll just bob some more seed in them, but they're coming on quite well. Um, obviously I'm a little bit um, nervous to put them out quite yet because of the potential frost, because obviously if we have a frost it'll just wipe all these out. But what I typically do is uh, wait for them to grow till they're about a foot or so high and then I'll be pulling them out. Basically you look for the first sort of tendrils that come out to, that, that, that holds onto the, uh, um, the sticks. As soon as you see one of them come out, you know it's ready. But basically, they're about sort of a foot, fourteen inches, you know, sort of twelve, fourteen inches high. Uh, you know, when you're ready to put them out, you don't want to leave them much longer than that because uh, they'll start to tangle around each other and uh, sort of get knotted up. But uh, that's the greenhouse um, as it is at the moment. Um, the herbs, the herbs are doing all right. They're still going under the glass there, as you can see. Uh, but the herbs are doing all right. The um, hydrangeas. I'm pretty sure I've lost three of the, um, the six, but the uh, the ones that are still going seem to be okay. Um, all the mint and everything is uh, growing there, and the the um, the comfrey is most certainly coming into flower. So I've pulled quite a few flowers off there, but it's uh, still flowering. This is the stuff out of the greenhouse which I've brought outside to harden off. There's the lettuce. This is the uh, the red one that looks a little bit like iceberg. There's some iceberg lettuce there, ready to go out. Um, Calendula, those are the um, pink calendulas, and they're uh, coming through. I brought out the um, sweet peas just to harden off a little bit, and the uh, the dahlias just to harden off a little bit. Obviously, I'm I'm, I'm quite mindful of the frosts, so um, if if we do get a frost, I'll obviously I'll I'll, I'll put the, uh, the the dahlias back in the greenhouse. There are the um, um, sunflowers which um, are potted up. Um, today, I've just brought those outside uh, again to harden up. Um, we've had quite a few uh, chives, and the chives are actually going to flower, believe it or not, which is po probably because it's been so dry. But um, um, I'm not quite sure if to pull the flowers off now or to leave them on or what. If you've got any advice on that, I would appreciate it. I've never had chives going to flower this early in the season, but uh, I'm not sure if to pull them off or not. But uh, if you can advise, I'd appreciate any uh, comments on that. Um, the asparagus, as you can see, I'll come down here, you'll be able to see it. Um, there's, the asparagus is doing really well, some bits over to kind of three foot, three foot tall now. What I might need to do is put a bit of shading in, sorry, not shading, a bit of uh, protection against the wind, um, just to protect it a bit because I'm frightened of it kind of blowing over and, and, and get it broken. But uh, that's the um, asparagus. Again, there's the, the other batch of uh, comfrey. And again, that's that's running to seed. Oh, well, sort of, it's got flower buds on it, should I say? So um, I'll obviously pull them off uh, before they flower and seed everywhere. But uh, I'm a little bit concerned that that's um, that's run now. That has been watered quite a few times, so I don't think that's water. So I'm not quite sure what uh, what's going on with there. But anyway, that's what we are there. Raspberries are coming through nicely. I need to go through and pull out the the bits of wood that are sort of dying off and stuff like that. But uh, there's the tree frame, obviously the middle tree's in, um, and the two jostebury brushes either side of it, but uh, this this hole and the hole at the top there, I need to uh, basically get the STS drill down there and try and break the rock up underneath. Um, a bit of bindweed coming through there, I don't know if you can see, that's coming in from under the path. What I have done is I've put a bit of weed killer on that this week. Um, I've just literally sprayed just, just that little bit there. Um, Spinach is still doing really well. We're eating quite a lot of the spinach. A few of the seed heads are coming up. Um, as you can see, this is the this is the seed head here. And what you need to do is, if you if you see one of them, basically just go down as far as you can go and twist that off. Um, then the you know the plant will not go to seed. So there's a bit of there. Just basically go down as far as you can and twist it out um, so the plant doesn't go. Uh, the onions are still coming up. Obviously, the ones that are coming later. Um, have not come up yet. I apologise about the wind if you can't hear me very well. Um, these uh, these onions here are uh, growing quite merrily now. Even though they've only had a little bit of water, they're obviously shooting quite nicely and getting the roots down. Um, but really, if it doesn't rain, um, if it doesn't rain in the next few days, what I will do is um, get the hose pipe up here and uh, give them a bit of water. To be honest with you. Um, I'll be digging a trench out from in there for the peas, as I've said before. Um, the, 
the um, green broccoli is uh, doing all right as you can see that's merrily establishing itself in the, uh, the tunnel. Now I haven't watered it too much this week um, because I've wanted it to uh, because of the uh, the weather I didn't want to water it at night and then potentially it freezing at night so even though it has had a bit of water um, I've not watered it too much but uh, anyway that's the the calabrese or the or the broccoli the um, nothing shown from the parsnips down here yet I had a look earlier today but there's nothing there and the um, those are the um, those are the swede that we put in last week um, they have had a bit of water but again I haven't watered them tonight but I'm going to put a little fence across the back there just to protect them a little bit I think because the wind really is whistling through here now the beetroot is, is doing really well um, just pull these bricks out of the way um, I'm putting these bricks on here just to weight the top there to stop it from uh, sort of blowing away but uh, this is what I showed you last week if you look at it now yeah, you can see that it's doing really well now. I'm going to be picking most of this tomorrow. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll pick what pick what we're going to eat, and then I'll I'll be removing these two bins. Then I think, and then giving the plant chance to uh, you know sort of get some sunlight. But uh, that's what forced rhubarb looks like. Um, as you can see, this piece here that's what you that's what you're looking for. A, a nice uh, nice piece of pink pinky white rhubarb, which will be nice and sweet. And very tender, so that's uh, that's just the job there is. Now, I have shown you in previous videos how to how to um, pull rhubarb, and it's, uh, it's not it's not too difficult. But basically, what you want to do, I'll just quickly show you now. I shan't pick any, but um, if you take this leaf here, look. Obviously, the rhubarb is just underneath there. Now, if I if I show you here, if you can see this, you take your hand down to the bottom. And obviously if you've got the leaf going that way, that's the way you want to push it. So you take your hand down to the bottom and then push that way and pull at the same time and it'll basically separate the, the, the rhubarb from the root. What you don't want to do is leave a little bit at the bottom because that will go rotten and potentially damage the plant. So you want to pull this off and what you should end up with is like a little sort of cup shaped thing at the end of it which is where it attaches to the plant. But anyway, that's the rhubarb as you can see. Uh, that's probably about the uh, best part of four and a half foot tall now. And um, I have got a few little bits sticking out the side, so there's always there's always a bit that tries to escape. But uh, um, I'll be I'll be pulling those off. Um, and obviously, I want to I want to uh, want to encourage it to grow into the uh, inside the fence rather than outside. Now, I've actually decided what I'm actually going to do here now. Just want to sort of quickly explain. I was I was hoping to do it today, but because the weather's been vile. As you can see, it's uh, it's quite dull and overcast at the moment, so the wind's been terrible. But uh, you can see these calendulas growing at the front. Um, I'm going to move any that is kind of here over, so I'll have the row of calendulas there, which uh, which is always on the beginning of the videos. I'm also going to be putting in there the the pink ones as well, so I'll have a mixture of of orange, yellow, and um, sort of pinky coloured ones, sort of peachy pink colour this year and then just behind it here will be the um, basically the uh, all of the uh, of the gourds basically like the pumpkins and the um, and the uh, the squashes and uh, the um, courgettes and stuff like that and then at the back here I'm going to be growing the um, I'm going to put a little fence up here and grow the uh, the chickpeas and the um, the um, the dal and the and the sort of the lentils and stuff like that. So there'll be the the new ones there. Obviously, right at the back there, that's where the beans are going to go. So uh, the runner bean canes will be going up very shortly. I'm aiming to plant them um, towards the end of um, towards the end of May. So really. Um, in the next sort of two or three weeks, what I need to do is get all the uh, get all the ground um, just prepared and all the rest of it. So I've got some grass and straw and stuff there that I've fetched out the chickens and obviously made the lawn. So the the beans are going to be going from kind of about here, level with the fence, and then they're going to be going all the way up up, up, up the side of the the path here, so I can uh, pick them from the path. And the beans are pretty much going to end here. So I've already got. Um, um, sort of compost and that buried under here 
Um, you know, where I've had the beam trench, but what I'm going to be doing is digging all of that in as well and just getting the ground ready for the, um, the canes. Then I'll put the canes up in the next week or so um, down to there so I've, so I've got the structure in place. And at the back here, what I'm going to be doing is building up a little fence against the, the back wall of the, uh, the tunnels, both, both tunnels, all the way across. Kind of like this corrugated stuff here, but higher. So it's going to be about sort of three foot high. Um, and then I'm going to carry that, that fence on all the way kind of to about here, just to protect the parsnips and everything else. Um, there's going to be a row of sunflowers going along there. And then just in front of it here will be the, the spinach. Um, and I'm also going to be growing some spinach at the front as well. So I'm hopefully going to put a couple of rows of that in. All, all of this there is going to be parsnips. And I'm going to have the, the, uh, the swede and then some spinach there. Um, but I'll want to grow a couple of rows of spinach, so I'll be putting this, some spinach down the front as well. And then this square here is where the corn's going to go, which if you remember is exactly the same place where it went last year. However, because there's been that much stuff going in the ground and um, sort of muck and stuff like that, you know, I think it'll be, uh, again, a good place to put all of the, um, all of the, uh, the sweet corn and stuff there. So uh, I'm kind of running out of space now in the allotment, obviously, because there's that much stuff going in, but uh, I think that's the way it's going to work out this year. So there's the onions from the other side, as you can see, they are doing... They are doing quite well. They're sort of, you know, some of them are going on for six inches tall now. And there is the odd one out of the second batch. I don't know if you can see there, but uh, if I can just zoom in, there's one just coming through there. Look, as you can see, the uh, the old wind vanes are going around quite merrily. So it is it is reasonably windy up the allotments, and it's not been uh, you know the kind of weather for me to come out and actually film because it's basically just too windy. The other thing that I'm going to be doing as well over the next um, couple of days. Hopefully I'll be able to catch this on video. But uh, I'm going to be, as you can see, I've got some spots here, 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 where the uh, the strawberry plants haven't uh, made it through. And also I've got all of these spare strawberries and I've also got some down there as well. So what I'll be doing is bobbing some extra plants in. And then I'm going to be uh, putting some fertiliser on the uh, the strawberries to uh, you know to bring them on a little bit better even though they are in flower they're quite early um, and uh, they don't look particularly healthy at all at the moment to be honest with you so and I've got some uh, what I have noticed over the past couple of days is I've got some bindweed coming through here look you see this here so what I'm going to do is get some of that uh, resolver um, stuff where I can just sort of paint it on the leaf and uh, you know try and kill it off that way but uh, I know it's not organic, but sometimes you have to you have to uh, you have to do what you can. So that's the the strawberry bed. So that's, I know that was a really quick tour, but um, that's the allotment on the uh, the second of April. Uh, sorry, second of May. Another plant I'm going to be growing this year is um, um, a chili pepper plant. This is also one that uh, my wife's bought, and she's bought it because it's basically called Big Jim. But uh, Again, this is going to go into the um, um, into the greenhouse, and what I'm probably going to do is actually put this in a big pot. But um, for now, what I'm going to do is just um, pot it up. Again, um, I'm going to be putting these into the pot, uh, just like the cucumber, you know, a slightly bigger pot. And again, I'm not going to be um, sort of planting it any lower than it was in its original pot. Um, you don't need to worry so much with these, um, you know, they're not as bad as cucumbers. But I'm just um, putting some... Um, sort of compost around the side and with peppers you don't really want to um, you don't really want to have the um, you know the soil too sort of firm so I'm only sort of gently firming this down obviously as I water it you know the uh, you know the compost will settle in a bit more anyway so um, so I'm just potting that up and what I will probably do is actually plant this in a big pot and um, sort of grow it like this now uh, rather than putting it in the border, which I did last year, and I didn't have much success to be honest with you. So, with um, with peppers, particularly chilli peppers, if you want the peppers to be hot, don't water them too much. If you um, keep the, uh, the plants a little bit drier, the chillies tend to be smaller and hotter. So, um, you know, you get more heat out of the chilli, but I'll just stick the label back in there, and I'll, um, I'll show you this you're getting on in a few weeks.
So, I hope this episode of Jim's Allotment has been of some use to you. Please do put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to all of the new subscribers, in fact all of the subscribers for your support of the channel. And I will see you on the next episode of Jim's Allotment Garden.